what do they call that? Flight or flee um, instinct, and uh, or fight or flee instinct. That's what it is. is it flight or, or fight. Flight or fight. Something oh, flight or fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Yep. Flight or foot. It's flight or fight. Flight or foot. Yeah. Flight or fight. See, you can't say that ten times fast. You can't. You can't argue with Google. They're always right. What I'm going to talk about today is dumpsters, rental is your product. And I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. I had a guy call me the other day and he said, hey, I want to extend the dumpster. And I gave him a price to extend it over another weekend. And here at Pennsylvania with our customers, the most important time is the weekends. So everyone wants their dumpster delivered on Friday. And he had said, I need it over another weekend. I said, no problem, but I'm going to lose you know, another sale. And I gave him a, a price to extend it over another weekend. He got a little frustrated with me. And I had to explain to him, dumpster rental is our product. It's no different than a hotel room. When you rent a hotel room, there's gonna be different prices for the weekend. There's gonna be different availability. And you're gonna be able to jockey your accessibility with your product, and this is your dumpsters. No different than a hotel room. And I try to explain that to people. There was um, just a situation, like I said, just this week, he wanted to ex extend it and he negotiated you know a price i gave him a little bit of a discount which i don't normally do but he was local you know a mile away so i hooked him up with a little discount and then he wanted to extend it over another weekend and he got pretty heated with me that i didn't jump up and down thanking him to let me give him my product for free he's like well i thought you know i could just keep it for free for another week and i said this is my product like i can't give away free product i don't have a problem giving you a discount or trying to work with you but just to say, hey, take some product. It'd be no different if I was selling soda or, or tasty cakes or, or what have you. And I said, you know, just go take a few off the shelf and you know, take them to all your friends. It, it's no different. So you can't give away the product for free. That leads me into the second story of a guy that wanted me to haul for him and only for him and how it really put a crunch on our, on our business. I'm having a better day than the guy in that ambulance. When I first started my business, there was a lot of things that I had preconceived notions on that I thought I knew and I didn't know. The number one is, is gonna to be to definitely control your costs. You may see a lot of money coming in. You'll start your, your business and you'll, you'll start making some money and you're gonna start bringing some cash in. And you're gonna think, wow, I made, I don't know, let's throw some numbers out there. I used to make, you know, $1,000 a day. Now I'm making 5,000 a day and 10,000 and it'll keep building up higher and higher. As you make more money, your costs don't necessarily go down. So even though that you're making more money and your production goes up, there's gonna be a point to where your costs are gonna be going up. They could go up twice as much, even three times as much when you start doubling your income. Just because you're making more money doesn't mean you're making more profit. That's what I'm trying to say. You're gonna say, well, how does that work? because there's a lot of things that transpire into you making more money that don't generally mean that you're going to make more profit. Let's say you have a big customer and they want you to run dumpsters for them and you're running one dumpster a day for them at let's say 500 bucks. That same customer says to you, I want you to run five cans. This happened to me and it was very early on in our career. A customer wanted me to run dumpsters for them and it was great. I was doing a few dumpsters a day actually. We were, you know, doing pretty well. He said, "Hey, there was like there was like some sort of like flooding or something." And he says, "We're going to need like 10 cans a day." I'm like, "Wow, that's great. I'm going to like go buy like a beach house in the Caribbean and you know be, you know, go I don't know, be like a rapper out on a mega yacht." you know, like with, with, with all this, with all this coin, I'm going to get a grill, Viper. you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a, yeah, I'm going to be like, hit it twice. I'm going to be a Viper or Piper or whatever. <laughs> and, and, um, and, 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 you know, I'm going to get like eight girlfriends. I'm like doing 10 cans a day for this one guy. It was early on in my career. Here's what happened. It went from a few cans a day to him having all my attention. What happened was I was doing so many cans for one person, I, I couldn't service my other customers. 
and they put me in such a bind. Basically, they wanted to hire me as their personal hauler because, like I said, there was like a natural, it was like a, it was like a hurricane or something like that. And I, I can't remember if it was, a, I think it was a, either a flood or a hurricane. It was, a, it was a long time ago. What I'm trying to say is don't put yourself in a position where you're gonna depend on just one customer and where they run you in circles to the point to where you can't keep your other customers happy. And that might be a really hard lesson. Like listening to this is gonna be way different than when it happens to you. So it's gonna be a hard lesson and, and you're gonna say, screw that. And I'm not telling you not to take the extra work. I'll explain what I do. If somebody says to me, they want me to haul just for them, I'll put a premium on my dumpsters and they'll say, well, why am I gonna pay more? You don't generally say you're gonna charge them more but you don't give them a bottom discount price because if you do, it'll put you in such a bind that you won't be able to service your other customers, especially if you only have one or two trucks. If you only have one or two trucks, you're gonna put yourself in a position where you can't service your other you know, one-off customers and they're gonna want you to be there at their beckoning call. If, if somebody wants you to basically become like a private hauler for them for a day or two, like let's say you're gonna do a house demolition, you have to put a premium on your truck to make sure you're getting paid adequately because you're gonna fall behind on your other customers and you could get either bad reviews, you're gonna pick some customers off. So you don't wanna put yourself in a position where you take this really cheap bottom basement pricing and you aggravate your other customers. So a lot of guys will do what's called haul and tonnage. Well, they'll charge you a hundred bucks or $150 to deliver the dumpster and then they'll charge for the weight that's in the dumpster. We don't do that. I'll do that very, very limited occurrences. The time I'll do a haul and tonnage where I charge them for the dumpster and then charge them for whatever weight they put in the dumpster is only if they're gonna be doing it on a recurring basis. So I'll put a dumpster out there on a, on a haul and tonnage. We have a few clients that have, they have like two dumpsters on their yard all the time. They do like rehabs and stuff like that, but they keep it they keep it the whole time. We'll charge them X amount of dollars and that'll change markets to markets. We're on the Eastern side of Pennsylvania. I've seen people do it as cheap as $150, which is completely, you're not making any money at 150. If you haul a dumpster for 150 bucks, do 150 plus tonnage, in my opinion, you're losing money. Can you make money doing it? Sure, I guess you can make a few bucks, but the liability that you're putting into that haul, lifting a can on the truck, putting a truck on the road to make 30, 40 dollars because you're not 150 is not gonna be 100% profit and you're only making a few dollars on tonnage, you might make what you think is your hard profit is let's say $150 on a can. You take it out, you deliver the dumpster, you pick it up, you have fuel, you have your manpower and now you have your liability. By the time you factor all that in to put a dumpster out on the street for 150 bucks, unless you need that 150 bucks, don't do it. Hauling a dumpster for 150 bucks, it's like a form of prostitution. It, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense in my opinion. Um, you know, for us to put a can on the street for less than 270, 220 is kind of like what makes sense. Now, if you're doing nothing and, the, and you know, a friend of yours says, hey, I, I will say I will do dumpsters for France for 150 for all. That's rare occurrences, you know, like my cousin, but I still have to charge them because you can't run a benevolent society. You can't give your services away for free. In closing, remember guys, be fair with your customers, understand what they want and be, be compassionate to their needs. Just because they're trying to negotiate doesn't make them cheap, it just makes them not want to give you their money. And understand what they're looking for. And don't let one customer dictate how you run your customer. Don't let a customer tell you where to put a dumpster or if you feel like you can't put the dumpster in the grass, listen to your internal warning system and don't put the dumpster in the grass. There may be something in the back of your head that tells you not to do something, but if someone reluctantly tries to talk you into something, you're gonna have a disaster on your hand. And don't fall into the trap that I did where one customer makes you want to haul just for them and put you in a bad position. It could really put you in a bad situation. All right, guys, that's about it. I'll, um, we'll check you next time and peace. Update on the fight or flight. It's confirmed it is fight or flight. Bottom line, we're done here.